you know, I'm not working off a script here, I almost never do, but, but it, uh, I just wanted to pass this along to you. It's something that you probably already know. Fear is what's driving all of this. Fear of those who are the perpetrators, their, their fear of exposure. Fear from some people who could come forward, but they just want to make it to retirement. We're talking about people in academia. We're talking about people all over. Wouldn't it be something if we could just turn loose of that fear just long enough? There, there might actually be something that we could do significant that, would, that could possibly save the planet. We have there's a phalanx of problems out there to deal with. There's nothing we can do about Japan. There's nothing we can do about Fukushima. That's why the world isn't rushing to Fukushima. There's nothing they can do about it. It's the plain truth of it. It's a harsh reality, but it's true. But this stuff that's being sprayed overhead with its desiccant effect, smothering plants, metal infiltrating the human body, all these various diseases that nobody can prove is causing these ailments, not yet. But because of the support of you, all of you, everyone who is present here, that thinks something's wrong up there, that you can't tell us that it means, do you know I actually went to an airport and spoke with a, a mechanic. I just said, watch this. I was with a buddy of mine. I said, watch this. I said, look at those things up there. And he said, well, you know, they say that when you see one of those, it means there's a weather change coming. And I went, you said it, brother. <laughs> That's exactly what it means, all right? So anyway, just a little food for thought. We, uh, we spoke recently on uh, Caravan to Midnight with a man who said, they're not going to tell you that they're wrong. The universities are not going to tell you that, sorry, here, you get your money back. We were teaching the wrong stuff the whole time. They're not going to do that. So what do you do? You go over it, you go under it, you go around it, or... With the help of you, we'll go through it. And we'll go through it together, all right? And now, there will be a, uh, a presentation put together by the founder of this feast, Mr. Dane Wigington. It is called Engineering Earth, the Weather Modification Assault on Humanity. Mr. Wigington, please come most presently upon your hour. My deepest and most sincere gratitude to everyone who has shown the courage to try to discover what the truth is, because we're certainly not being told the truth. And for those who are trying to hide from the truth, I would ask this. If you're standing in the middle of the freeway, are you better off with your back to traffic or facing it? <laughs> and that's the scenario that we face. And we live in a society that has so far been run by tyrants and cowards who serve them. We cannot stay on this track any longer, or we will have nothing left to salvage. So when I, when I go into this PowerPoint presentation with data that's recent, breaking, and frankly hard to keep up with, let that be a catalyst to fuel all of us in this fire, that we would turn our angst to anger and use our anger for fuel to start spot fires of awareness all over the globe until they cannot be put out. The title of this presentation, Engineering Earth, Exposing the Weather Modification Assault on Humanity. I came into this battle, for those that don't know, I have a background with Bechtel Power, a background in renewable energy. My home was on the cover of the world's largest renewable energy magazine. I moved to the Pacific Northwest expecting to find clean air. I grew up in smog. As a, as a child, I wanted to be out of that air. And I couldn't understand how the adults around me thought it was OK or normal. When I moved to the Pacific Northwest and built a large off-grid home and began to lose 60, 70, 80 percent of my solar power uptake from whatever these aircraft were leaving behind, I started to research, lots of research, 
followed by lab testing. I did not want to believe this was going on in the skies above me. I did not want to find the metals named in climate engineering patents in my precipitation, but I did. So from that point on, this effort has been something I didn't want, I didn't ask for. But when one is faced with something of such magnitude that will strip the future of your children, of all children, there's no other choice. What is climate engineering? Climate engineering is the epitome of human insanity. It's the epitome of human arrogance, superseding all other forms of tyranny so far. Climate engineering is known by a number of terms, solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, stratospheric aerosol injection. This is the kind of science diagram that you see in many of the science publications. And there's a reason there's so many different forms of geoengineering shown, because they want to confuse the public. They want to show things that are so outlandish, like space mirrors. How feasible is that? And they, they mix this with remote control ships spewing marine layer, also infeasible. Ocean iron fertilization, the dumping of toxic materials into the ocean to cause algae blooms to suck up CO2 and deposit it in an ocean that's already too acidic. Carbon sequestering trees, artificial trees to suck up carbon. Don't we have real trees? Why do we need artificial trees? And finally, and most importantly, a jet aircraft spraying aerosols into the sky for the purpose of deflecting some of the sun's incoming thermal radiation. Doesn't take too much thought to consider that it also traps heat, more heat than it deflects with a whole list of downstream consequences. Again, another science diagram to make clear the intent of solar radiation management to deflect some of the sun's incoming thermal radiation dispersed with jet aircraft. And yet, in spite of all this science data and so many publications, we have media, most media, treating us as if we're talking about some completely fictitious scenario. Geoengineering is the biggest elephant in the room. It's the most cataclysmic undertaking of the human race yet superseding all other assaults on the environment. Our war against nature, by the way, is a war against ourselves. How do we know they're spraying? How about nozzles? <laughs> Mounted on the pylons, directly behind the engine exhaust. These are retrofit nozzles, and they are mounted directly behind the exhaust stream to make it appear as a condensation trail even on commercial aircraft, and we're not implicating commercial personnel or pilots, but their aircraft are positively being used because they've been identified from the ground, leaving a particulate trail. Again, we are not talking about condensation. We are talking about solar radiation management particulate trails. Our lab tests prove this material is coming down on us. We have film footage of these aircraft at altitude, which I'll get to. Anybody who thinks that sky is normal needs a serious reality check. That's about as unnormal as it gets. And we live under toxic skies. Our children live under toxic skies every single day. I can't tolerate life like that. I would rather go down to my last breath sounding the alarm than to accept life under toxic skies by people with such incredible arrogance that they think they have the right to play God with the weather and to play God with our health and our lives. Four photographs, three of heavily geoengineered skies, aerosolized skies, one untainted picture. How many of us even remember what such a sky looks like? It's so seldom we have lost track. These programs have been occurring for 65 years, having a profound effect on climate systems around the globe. Few of us truly know, quote unquote, natural weather in any way, shape, or form. The system is very complex and intricate and entirely connected. For those who think they can intervene with these systems and do anything but harm, it's the same as the pharmaceutical commercials we see on the TV every day, 
take this for that ailment, and by the way, here's 20 other things that are exponentially worse. <laughs> and the next commercial is an attorney's group saying if you took this and that, you can sue, and you're going. <laughs> this is the mentality that runs the planet. How can they get away with this? Because we're letting them get away. Because we're on our, I we're on our iPhones, watching football games, and that reality will not continue much longer. Learn to recognize what's an aerosolized sky. Inside, if you think it's only passengers inside aircraft with windows on the side that look like passenger jets, think again. There's a lot of things inside these aircraft that we're not being told about. And for those, again, who try to marginalize an issue of such gravity, either because they're afraid or because they've completely lost touch with the reality, how much proof do we need? And this is only a sample of that proof. This is important. It's important to understand that the greatest lie ever perpetrated on the human race is the lie of the condensation trail. Do condensation trails exist? Yes. But almost never behind a high bypass turbofan jet engine. And that's what that is. All commercial aircraft and all military tankers are fitted with a high bypass turbofan jet engine. It's a jet powered fan. It's designed for fuel efficiency. 85% of the air that passes through that engine is non-combusted. By design, that engine is nearly incapable of producing any condensation trail except under the most extreme circumstances, which very rarely exist. The higher you go in altitude, the less humidity there is. The conditions are simply not acceptable, especially with this engine, to create any condensation trail. So even when you see the short, bright trails, and they are trying to be more covert, there's no question. The in-your-face spraying with horizon-to-horizon -horizon trails has been diminished over at least California. You see the short, bright trails, you're still seeing spray, period. Take a good look at the image on the bottom, especially. That's a KC-10 spraying. You can watch that one turning on and off. That's a military KC-10 with nozzles visible. Watch here. You have a C-17 Globemaster and an AWAC. Watch. One aircraft just turned off. Condensation tr or spray trail stopped right there. Keep watching. There's the aircraft. No spray coming out. Nothing. Keep watching. Frame will change. There it is. Just turned on. Are you telling me that's condensation? Absolutely not. When you walk down the road on a cold day, which we don't have much of anymore, and your breath condenses, do you walk down the road a mile and look behind and see a cloud hanging behind you? <laughs> no, you don't. That is a very lethal weapon. That's a picture of the Hart facility. Those towers are 60 feet tall. This is one of several dozen of these facilities around the globe. Several dozen. That facility can transmit three and a half billion watts, billion with a B, of radio frequency waves into the ionosphere, causing an electrical chain reaction, which can heat the ionosphere as much as 15,000 degrees Fahrenheit over areas hundreds of square miles. They don't care about the consequences. Anybody who rationalizes that this wouldn't happen because they, the proverbial they, would not do this to themselves, you better look at reality. 2,000 nuclear bombs detonated around the globe. When they first detonated nuclear bombs, they had no idea what would happen, but they did it anyway, and they kept doing it. Don't they know that they work after several dozen? Do they need to blow off 2,000 nuclear bombs? Let's take Fukushima that may kill us all. There's no technology to cure Fukushima, none. It's a nuclear volcano, volcano with no end in sight. And there's 60 more nuclear plants on the drawing boards right now. Japan has just started to reactivate its mothballed, outdated, dilapidated nuclear reactors. We are not dealing with sanity. We're dealing with a power structure that's clinically insane. So don't attempt to rationalize what they do. These are known location of ionosphere heaters around the globe. There are likely many more locations that we don't know about. I want to stress, this is a runaway juggernaut of total military industrial complex insanity. And they are using our atmosphere for a physics lab, and we are all the test subjects. What do aerosolized microwave clouds look like? That's what they look like. And we have the meteorological community telling us this is normal. <laughs> and consider what the science community does after Fukushima. 
they raised the quote-unquote safe level of radiation by 10,000%. What changed? They make it up as they go, and we have an academic system that has been bought, sold, and paid for by the power structure. A system that tells us vaccines are safe when peer-reviewed study is proving more every day that that is anything but true. An academic community that, that tells us fluoride in our water is good for us. This is the society we live in. These clouds, as you see, are aerosolized with electrically conductive nanoparticulates that can be manipulated when exposed to radio frequencies that can cause them to repel each other. So you get an appearance, if you put iron shavings on a table with a magnet underneath, they align. And this is the same scenario we see in our clouds. So this is how they're trying to create as much cloud cover as possible, however toxic, however damaging to the atmosphere, that's their goal. This is part of how they accomplish it. These clouds are absolutely, indisputably being exposed to radio frequency transmission and they're heavy, heavily aerosolized. Four radar images. The top two are the same image, taken at the same moment with two different filters. You have standard infrared, enhanced infrared. If you looked at the enhanced infrared on your nightly weather show, wouldn't you become a little bit alarmed? <laughs> they don't want you to see this. So the images are filtered. Who does the weather modeling for the National Weather Service and NOAA? Raytheon. Defense contractor, geoengineering contractor, geoengineering patent holder, Raytheon. We have meteorologists now reading scripts. That's all they do. They read scripts. The bottom two images are also important. If you look off the coast of California, this grid pattern spraying occurs almost constantly. This is what they attempt to be solar radiation management, to stop the thermal energy from entering the ocean. Is it working? Well, given that we have the warmest ocean temperatures by far ever recorded in the Eastern Pacific, I would say no, it's not working. The whole ecosystem is dying right now the marine ecosystem is dying right now. We have the largest red tides ever observed from Baja to Alaska. We have fisheries shut down. We've had 10 to 15,000 seals wash up on the shores dead. How much of that are you being told while we're being shown the Donald Trump parade of idiocracy? How much? <laughs> this is killing our biosphere, period. Droughts are expanding around the globe. This can't happen in an overall sense on a planet that's warming. The laws of physics say it can't happen unless there's something in the equation that's not being acknowledged. The atmosphere holds 7% more moisture for every degree of warming centigrade. On a warming planet, it must rain more overall. The only reason it can't is because we have an atmosphere filled with particulates, the express goal of solar radiation management. Yes, pollution's a part of that. Pollution's a big problem. For those who don't think pollution is a problem or the other forms of human damage, we've damaged the planet immensely from countless directions, but this is the biggest problem of all. Global dimming is 25% today. That means 25% of the Earth's direct rays that reached the planet five decades ago no longer do, and that is the express goal of solar radiation management. So we have droughts expanding around the globe with horrific, horrific consequences. Massive tree die-off is occurring all around the globe. Anybody who knows anything about trees can see how horrible they look. And when we're told, when media goes to the effort to tell us it's only the drought, and we see trees, landscape trees, dying just as quickly, we know we're being lied to. When we see the bark being burnt off of those trees on the sun-exposed side because the UV radiation is astoundingly high, because the ozone layer is being torn apart, by climate engineering and ionosphere heaters, we know we're being lied to. Does a drought cause the bark to be burned off the sun-exposed side of the tree? No. So again, it's up to all of us to learn what's happening. I tried to sound the alarm on the trees about a decade ago. My father was an arborist, and I, I, I'm particularly sensitive to trees. I can see when they're not healthy. 
They didn't look bad enough then. They certainly look bad enough now. They are dying all over the globe at a cataclysmic rate because this is a nonlinear equation. It's important to remember that. Nonlinear. As it begins to unfold, it unfolds exponentially. Our boreal forests are dying. Boreal forests are the second greatest source of oxygen on the planet. Forest fires are increasing around the globe. Defense industry technician Mark McCandless elaborated on this. I'm going to take this a little bit further. So we know that bioavailable metals are falling on us. We know this. We've done 70 lab tests in Shasta Siskiyou County alone, 70. There's a mountain of toxic metals that peer-reviewed study makes clear are highly toxic to root systems. It causes the organisms to stop nutrient uptake, so they die a very slow, protracted death. So we have bioavailable metals killing the trees from below. We have unbelievably intense UV radiation killing them from above. We have protracted drought because aerosolizing the skies affects evaporation, affects the hydrological cycle radically, so the trees are being droughted out. And this is very important. The trees are being coated with an incendiary dust. These metal particulates are incendiaries. So from every direction, the forests are burning up. Right now in Siberia, record and cataclysmic fires are happening. We're not being told about that. Siberia is losing 100 million acres a year. Canada lost 600% more forest to forest fire than the historical norm. There's nothing normal about any of this. So when your media tries to pacify you, when agency officials, officials try to pacify you because that's their job, stop and consider that they are paid to deceive the population, to keep the population calm. Whatever else their motive, that's what they're doing. More confirmation. Again, all the red zones you see. Forest fires burning around the globe at unprecedented rates. And this is a feedback loop. The more forests burn, the more greenhouse gas is released. And anybody who says greenhouse gas is not a problem is also off track. It's a huge, huge problem. Not just CO2, but methane. And climate engineering is making the whole situation exponentially worse. The planet, the planet cannot respond to the damage being done because it's virtually in a straitjacket of toxic geoengineering metal particulates and radio frequencies. Fires are increasing exponentially. As the hydrological cycle is disrupted, record flooding increases along with record drought. You get both extremes. And as we're told, that these extremes are simply a result of climate change. And I'm not saying that's not a factor because of the other damage we've done to the climate system. But in 1998, when the term climate change was really implemented, that's when the geoengineering programs were totally unleashed. And they needed a term that would get the population to accept radical swings in weather, unbelievable swings in weather, because they knew they were going to be pulling the levers orchestrating the weather. So they needed a term that would get the population to accept that as normal. And we have academia towing that line, the climate science community towing that line. And they're doubling down on their lie. The deeper the lie goes, the more they hold to it. Because once it's exposed, there'll be a shock wave around the globe. Popular science. China's weather manipulation brings crippling snowstorm to Beijing. That's how much they can manipulate the weather. They can turn what should have been a rainstorm into a snowstorm with chemical ice nucleation, and they are doing this constantly. China openly admitted it until they did a billion dollars worth of damage to Beijing. Mainstream media covered it, and we're told, even though this is covered, that this is some fringe issue. We can't let our media and our so-called agencies continue to marginalize us. We can't let our so-called elected officials continue to marginalize this issue. Our local congressman, Doug LaMalfa, who at one meeting asked me if I could serve him credible data, besides our testing that was done at the state lab, but that wasn't good enough. The following week, I served him data from California EPA, from the contact I have there. And his staff later told me that they don't recognize that as a credible source of data. So what do they recognize? What do they recognize? The last event I did in Reading, LaMalfa, we are told now, received over $3,000 from Monsanto. Where does Monsanto fit in this equation? So Monsanto is a part of this cabal. They bought Climate Corp for $970 million because those who are involved with weather modification have to control the message. That's why, again, Raytheon does the modeling for NOAA 
National Weather Service. We have Weather Channel is owned by Blackstone and Bain Capital. Weather Central is owned by the Rothschilds. We have the Foxes running the hen house from the bottom to the top. So that's what we face. Geoengineering has left Earth perilously exposed to solar flares. If we have a Kerrigan event, which is a major solar flare that happened in the 1850s, that may be the end of the road for all of us. Climate engineering has shredded Earth's natural protection. So now if we have a major CME, a coronal mass ejection, major solar flare, that will shut down electrical grids around the globe. When those grids are shut down, we may have Fukushima times 100 or 200. And that would certainly be the end of the road. But from their logic, the more they spray, the more they have to spray. What a downward cycle is that? The more they destroy our natural protection, the more they justify spraying even more. In addition to the risk now from a CME, a coronal mass ejection, I want to stress we have a shredded ozone layer. And we are seeing UVB ratings, readings, a thousand percent higher than we are being told. If the, sun, if the sun feels hot on your skin, it's because it is hot. It's incredibly hot. It's killing plankton. It's killing a lot of things. It's killing our trees. We're told no more than 95, no more than 5% of incoming UV should be UVB. We're seeing 60%. And we're seeing UVC on the surface as well. We're told UVC stops 100,000 feet up. We're seeing a slight reading on the surface. The next band of UV radiation is X-ray. That should point out how lethal that this is. Our oceans are becoming toxic dead zones. Why do you see jellyfish? Because jellyfish survive in low oxygen environments and they are proliferating around the globe because the oceans are dying. Seeing proliferation of jellyfish is a horrific sign. Japanese fishermen can't net fish anymore because they're species of jellyfish that are as much as nine feet wide and weigh hundreds of pounds. They're breaking their nets. And the Japanese thought they would try something to fight nature. Again, we fight nature, we fight ourselves. They built nets that would sift the jellyfish and cut them into tiny parts. That's what makes jellyfish proliferate. <laughs> so now the problem expands. And again, we see fighting nature is a losing proposition. And climate engineering is the epitome of that. We have polluted toxic zones. We have mats of algae in China. How many people have seen a picture like that? Mats of algae that are so thick you can walk on it on the ocean. That's the sign of a dead ocean. And we have this lie that's being perpetuated that somehow technology is going to fix all of this. Technology so far, on the road we're on, is bringing us to certain mathematical near-term total global extinction. That's what technology has done for us. You cannot beat nature. You can only harm yourself. The red tides are happening around the globe as well, radically along the U.S. West Coast. Over 400 ocean dead zones around the globe are expanding, some as big as 10,000 square miles, dead zones where nothing lives, and they're expanding. 95% of global pelagic fish populations are already gone. We're not going to be eating fish much longer on this course. This is extremely alarming. We're told nothing about it in the largest scientific panel ever created in human history, the IPCC. 2,000 plus of the world's top climatologists don't even consider this a factor in their models. How can that be? What kind of education do these people have? This is methane expulsion. Methane holds the key to life and death on Earth at this point more than any other issue. Climate engineers claim that their programs will help with this situation. After 65 years, are they helping? No. So what you see on top, that's a, that's a methane blowhole. It's happening all over Yamal, Siberia. That's from massive methane explosion out of the ground. These craters are surfacing everywhere. It's happening on the seafloor. Methane is flooding the atmosphere as we speak. We're told by the climate science community methane is 20 times more potent than CO2. Again, a half truth. That's over a 100 year time horizon. Over a 10 year time horizon, it's a 100 times more potent. Methane is like flooding the player or filling the atmosphere with a layer of glass and it's covering the planet now. You see the methane escalation on the chart below and let's get to another layer of insanity on the right. That diagram represents the latest layer of climate engineering insanity, Project Lucy and Project Alamo, to use these massively powerful ground-based 
ionosphere heaters to microwave the atmosphere in an attempt to degrade the methane that climate engineering helped to create in the first place. One layer of insanity on top of another. Atmospheric methane saturation is contributing to noctilucent cloud formation. These clouds may look beautiful, but they are ominous, absolutely ominous. Again, the atmosphere is filling with methane as we speak. There's enough methane in the Arctic, in the East Laptev Sea, to cause a Permian-style mass extinction 100 times over. There's enough methane to turn this planet into Venus. And these clouds are a sign of that process continuing, and geoengineering is helping to fuel that process. Whales threatened by metals in water, toxic metals, specifically aluminum. It's not just in the water, they're breathing it. This image is to make this point. You cannot hide from these programs. There was a thousand whales tested from the most remote places on the planet in 2010, and the report stated they contained jaw-dropping levels of aluminum in their tissue. Jaw-dropping levels. You cannot hide from this, and every single one of us is sucking this material in with every breath we take. This headline should be considered. USA Today, 2,000 geese fall dead out of the sky in Idaho. Idaho Department of Fish and Game apparently says that cholera is suspected in the death of the snow geese. Now, I just, I just want you to consider, do you think it's possible that 2,000 geese are flying along and they suddenly all contract cholera and fall dead? <laughs> we have to check our reality. We have to. We are literally being herded off a cliff right now, every single one of us from every direction. We have to check our reality. We have to make our voices heard, and that's the kind of lies we're exposed to every single day. We need to wipe our biases clean, wipe our preconceptions clean, and look through a clear lens. Yet one more glaring red flag. I've communicated with some of the top B people in the country going back a number of years, pleading with them to look at our data, pleading with them that there was a much bigger issue killing the bees than just farm chemicals. And the bees are collapsing. They're completely collapsing. This year is worse than any other year. They're dying in the summer now, not just the winter. They are collapsing. All the pollinators are collapsing. So what do we have now? We now know with peer-reviewed study that bees are testing with 70 times more aluminum in their system than what it takes to cause Alzheimer's or dementia in a human being. It's a wonder any of them are alive. 70 times more. And this is important as well. When you have somebody from some agency who's paid to lie, who tells you it's normal to have aluminum everywhere because it's a very abundant element. That is a lie of inaccuracy. Aluminum is very abundant in the environment, yes. But it does not exist in the environment in free form. It doesn't exist in free form. It must be mined and refined and sprayed for it to be scattered everywhere in the environment, and that's exactly what's happening. It's not just the bees that are dying. Every single one of us is being contaminated. These materials are bioavailable. They're building up in our systems, and it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. It doesn't matter. It's a fact. We have the lab test to prove it. Alzheimer's, autism, the common link, the common link is aluminum. I tried to sponsor an Alzheimer's event here in Reading, $500 donation to the Alzheimer's Foundation. They refused that donation because they stated emphatically that aluminum had nothing to do with Alzheimer's. And, and they sure didn't want me talking about the fact there's a massive aluminum contamination that our authorities are not telling us about. And I know this, I know this. I've been in, in meetings here in Reading, with Reading Environmental Waste five years ago, closed door meeting, I was asked to attend because I study this issue. Shown tests of the Sacramento River with massive spikes of aluminum. I was allowed to attend that meeting on the promise of confidentiality, which I'm breaking now. And... These agency people have a responsibility, a legal mandated responsibility to inform the public of public health threats and that is not being done. And I ask every one of those people who are hiding this issue, take a good look in the mirror and understand that when the public wakes up to this issue, they will hold those responsible for hiding this issue as accomplices in these crimes. One last statistic on this frame, and I'll move on. That autism chart 
is not current because we're not seeing current charts. They seem to be scrubbed off the web. But we're told right now, autism has increased 10,000% since 1975, over 10,000%, from 1 in 5,000 to 1 in 47. We're now told by one of the primary research institutions in the world, MIT, that with, in less than 10 years, one out of two children will have autism. Brand new study, this is a week old, from a physicist who's a personal friend, Dr. Marvin Herndon. It's been published in a peer-reviewed manual. This is a big arrow in our quiver. Evidence of coal fly ash, toxic chemical geoengineering, and the troposphere consequences for public health. Again, this is in a peer-reviewed science journal as of a week ago. There will be no hiding this issue much longer. And what does it appear? The chemical signature for what's showing up in rain tests matches coal fly ash, a substance that the EPA has told us is not harmful. They've been trying desperately to get rid of and it seems to suit the purposes for geoengineering, and evidence is increasingly indicating that toxic coal fly ash may be one of the base materials they're using to spray because it gives them plausible deniability. This report elaborates on that. You can read this on geoengineeringwatch.org. This is an important map. This is departure from normal high temperature map for 2014. The only significant zone below normal global temperatures for 2014 was the eastern half of the North American continent. Take a good look at the blue zone on the eastern half of the U.S. Does that look normal to have one zone that's so anomalously cool in a world that's so warm? Why would that be? And that's part of geoengineering at this point. They're trying to hide the magnitude of what's unfolding, of what they have helped to cause to happen by throwing everything they have at cooling the zone with the highest percentage of U.S. population, engineered snowstorms, the tests prove it, so they can talk about Boston snow over and over and over and over and confuse the population and not mention the fact, by the way, 14,000 feet up in the Sierras, there's nothing, nothing. So this can't be hidden much longer. We just passed July as the warmest ever recorded on our planet. This year is shattering records, ocean temperatures off the scale. Again, there'll be no hiding this for long, but it's important you understand that when you're seeing headlines of certain areas that are cold, consider how unnatural this scenario is. This is important. Again, the Pentagon, the U.S. military, and all the top U.S. military brass considers climate change the greatest and most immediate threat. Not only do we have all the top U.S. military leaders stating climate change is the greatest and most immediate national security threat of all, everywhere we look, we find glaring red flags to further acknowledge the ongoing lethal climate engineering reality. From the military's own document stating its desire to own the weather, to congressional and UN documents outlining the global governance of geoengineering and specifically solar radiation management. Yet, in spite of absolutely overwhelming evidence, the official denial continues from all governmental agencies. This denial is then backed up by the power structure corporate media. The fight to expose and halt climate engineering is a fight for life, nothing less. I want to ask you, do you think they would ask our permission before they can engage in these programs? Not a chance. Not a chance. Did they ask anybody permission to go blow up islands in the South Pacific to test their nuclear bombs? No. Did they ask the U.S. population if they could do biological testing? No. About two dozen cases of the U.S. military doing biological testing on U.S. civilian populations without their knowledge or consent. This is business as usual. We need to wake up from the bubble. This is the military we have. This is the bottom line. Brzezinski, absolute global insider, advisor to the elite. This is the representative for the power structure. What Brzezinski says is this, major world powers, new and old, also face a novel reality. This is a direct quote. While the lethality of their military might be greater than ever, their capacity to impose control over the politically awakened masses of the world is at a historic low. Because we're waking up, and we need to keep waking up. But he goes on to say, to put it bluntly, in the earlier times, it was easier to control one million people than to physically kill one million people. And this is the most important part of all of his quote, today it is infinitely easier to kill one million people than to control one million people. 
This is coming from a global elite insider. I'm simply asking you to consider who is saying this. Henry Kissinger, inarguably, global elite insider. He who controls the food supply controls the people. He who controls energy can control whole continents. He who controls the money can control the world. This is the mentality that runs our planet. And while they've kept everybody entertained and occupied, the cancer has spread to unimaginable proportions. And I want to make clear our military, by the way, we have a lot of great men and women in the US military, just like Mario Ramirez, who I'm honored to call my friend. And I, I salute those men and women. Absolutely salute them. I've given to DAV, VFW. I worked to rehab NAM vets in my past as a volunteer. But we need to wake them up. It's not OK to follow orders when those orders hold the future of our children in hands. Another global elite, Rockefeller. We are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis, and nations will accept the new world order. That's how these people think. That's their game plan. That's their goal. It's about power and control. Anybody who thinks our government and those at the top of our government are here for our benefit, again, you need to take a reality check. This should be carefully considered. Those in power have always believed they have the right to decide who lives and who dies on planet Earth. Direct quote from Mr. Kissinger, depopulation should be the highest priority of the US policy towards the third world. Who gave him the right to make that decision? I'm asked all the time, who's behind this? Who's running these programs? All roads lead back to those who print the money. And so many conflicts around the globe are about this right now. Saddam Hussein was taken out because he wanted to disconnect from the dollar. It had nothing to do with freedom and democracy. Same is true with Gaddafi. Same is true with other countries in the Middle East that did not want to use the dollar anymore. So we need to wake up. What is the motive behind the power structure? It's not about spreading freedom and democracy. It's about control. And who's at the head of that control? Those who print the money. That's the central bankers. And the, the dollar's about to be dethroned. So the power structure's more dangerous than ever. Obama's war on whistleblowers. Another question I get asked a lot. Why don't we have whistleblowers? We had one. We had Kristen Megan. She's the real deal, I believe. I've communicated with her a number of times. She's a former Air Force industrial hygienist. Her job was to check for toxins, and she absolutely confirmed these programs were going on. But why don't we have more whistleblowers? Let's look at the facts. The Obama administration has prosecuted more whistleblowers than all other administrations combined. Two, when we look at, for example, the torture issue. John Kariaku, who blew the whistle on the torture that was going on with their own military, who is the only person to be put in prison? John Kariaku. That's what we do to our whistleblowers. So consider why no one will step forward. And the consequences for anybody directly involved with these programs would likely be much, much worse. They would likely not get far in this world if they tried to speak out. CIA sponsored trolls monitor internet and internet inter users in order to discredit factual information. The power structure knows all it has to do is cast doubt on issues to confuse the population. It's important we know this. So we all need to learn to sift the baby from the bathwater and recognize there is a lot of people who are paid to confuse us. We need to see through it. I want to make a point with this, the last presentation I did in Reading, I had a pallet that size of free DVDs to give away, 2,000 of them, five foot by five foot by five foot, weighed 500 pounds. It disappeared. So when I called UPS to ask where was my pallet, they said it's been redirected. That's the term they used. They later backtracked and said, we don't have it, send us a claim, we'll pay it. Never tried to look for it. Why was that? The DVD manufacturer who shipped Millions of DVDs said they've never had anything happen like this. So just to make the point that those in power can do a lot to slow the progress of movements they do not want to gain traction. Species extinction. You see the escalation. To be clear, right now, species extinction rates 
are two to three hundred species of plant, animal, and insect a day going extinct. Two to three hundred a day. Anybody who tells you that's normal, and we have agency people, media people trying to tell us that's normal. That's 15,000 times background rates. Nothing normal about that. We are statistically in the sixth great mass extinction right now. In the last 40 years, human populations have doubled. You can see how fast human populations have gone up on the lower right. Wildlife species have declined globally by nearly 60% in 40 years. How long do we think that can last? We need to wake up to this reality now. When you see the type of massive civilization structures on the lower left, ask yourself how sustainable that is in this paradigm. Again, how long can we go if we've lost 60% of Earth's wildlife in the last 40 years? One more from Kissinger, the power structure and their mainstream media weapon of mass distraction persistently programmed the population to accept obvious lies and reject verifiable truths. It's not a matter of what's true that counts, but a matter of what is perceived to be true. On that note, take a good look. This building's being demoed. We all recognize this as a demo, do we not? This building is being demolished with explosives. Take a good look. That's the third building on 9-11 to come down, that most people don't even know there was a third building. Why? Because the media didn't want you to know. Take a good look and ask yourself this. The official story is that that building came down, a 47-story steel structure high-rise, came down in seven seconds, never got hit by anything because some furniture was burning on the first floor. <laughs> if that's how flawed our high-rises are. Anytime someone lights a cigarette up in a high-rise, we should be running for the exits. <laughs> and my point is this. If you believe the official story on that event, then you believe these are condensation trails above your head. And we need to wake up to this. This event's come and gone. We can't change it now. But if we don't change what's happening above our heads, it's game over. And that's a mathematical fact. We are in the Anthropocene. This is a scientific term. It's the age of humans. And this is a good example of the mindset of modern industrialized society and climate engineering to build a massive city on sand. This is in Dubai. This is totally unsustainable. The power structure is right now doing everything they can from pumping up the stock market with printed Fed fiat money to keeping everybody in the dark about the marine ecosystem die-off, the global wildlife die-off. This is the age we are in, and it is climate engineering is the epitome of insanity for human activity. One last spray video to make this point again. If you believe Building 7 came down because of some furniture burning on the first floor, perhaps you might believe that this is condensation, which is clearly not. You can see the aircraft. It's right there. It's fading in and out. Watch closely. Now, all that's aerosol. Everything in the sky, the cobwebby looking spider clouds, they spread the aerosols out with microwave radio frequency transmissions. Keep watching. There'll be a little better footage here in a moment. Aircraft is there. There. Watch closely. There's the aircraft. Off. Off. They're cleaning out the lines. We have lots of footage like this. The point is, all you have to do is look up. It's all you have to do, and you can see that what's going on is clearly not normal. We are clearly involved with these programs. And the point of all this presentation to try to wake people up is if you leave here tonight, if you leave here and you go back about your lives thinking you've done your part, we have no chance. We have no chance. This town of Reading, a lot of work has been done here, a lot of activists, and I couldn't do any of this without the help I've gotten from so many people, every person that spoke here, all the activists behind the scenes, and every one of you that's taken the time to show up. If we combine our voices, we can put a hole in the armor in this town. We can bring this issue to light, and all we have to do is put a crack in the dam. That's all. We don't have to dismantle the dam. All we have to do is put a crack in it, and they will not be able to stop the flow.
the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men and women to do nothing. Words of wisdom from Edmund Burke, to stand by and do nothing. And from the Hopi elders, we are the ones we've been waiting for. It's up to us. Even in this late date, even at this late date, we can do astounding good. However dark the horizon is, we should not be overwhelmed. We should use our angst again for fuel in this fight to march forward and, and put that crack in the dam that each and every one of us can do. Working together. Make your voice heard in the battle to expose and halt climate engineering. Thank you. Every single day counts in the critical battle to expose and halt the ongoing climate engineering insanity. It's essential for all that are currently awake and aware of what is happening in our skies to assist in the crucial effort to wake others. We must reach a critical mass of awareness as fast as possible. Every one of us is capable of being the final grain of sand that tilts the scale and triggers the landslide of awakening that is so desperately needed. Make your voice heard in this fight while there is yet time to salvage what remains of our environment, our health, and our planet's life support systems.